All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to the IPFS DOPS working group for January 30th. Um, yes, maybe let's get started, do some status updates on things uh, that have been ongoing. Uh, I guess I'll start a uh, shout out to uh, to Daniel, um, put up a a blog on kind of the, the state of, of DAPS and IPFS. Uh, kind of very thorough, kind of covers um, covers a lot of the state of what's been going on. Would recommend checking it out and giving feedback if you think there's um, other things that you know should be there or 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 uh, you know corrections to be made or or things for a follow up post. Um, maybe hand it over to uh, um, Russell and Alex to talk about the uh, verified fetch uh, work and how things have been going on over there. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, uh, the Helia verified fetch it um it's been reviewed by most people. I think it's ready to merge. Um given you know an, another an approval from alex once he looks at it again um but yeah it's working well it's in the helia http gateway um and working well it's in helia service worker gateway with some fixes i put in yesterday to um cache ipns lookups and it's working fairly well there um the uh, running in the service worker gateway um and pulling in a large website such as like blog.ipfs.tech or ipfs.tech um ends up spawning some 429s from the trustless gateways um after a few refreshes so we might have to um look at that a little a little more deeply but yeah, I mean, it's working well. Um, I think it's ready for a release candidate. Yeah, I think the API is where we want it to be. Like, most of the tweaks are just internal things now. So can I give it a once over? But yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy where we're at. My guess is that the the four twenty nines and such are probably related to, um, you know, basically call them like numbers of requests versus size of request things, right? Um, I think if you're doing lots of block requests instead of a car request, right, it's going to look like lots of requests, which means either, you know, switching to switching to leverage, um, to leveraging car requests for for more data or. Uh, so looking at what the restrictions are are on um on some of the gateways like you know ipfs.io or how to distribute the load between multiple gateways and, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. For large for large websites, it meant like a large number of blocks in it. But yeah, since we're doing block level requests, it's sending one request for every node in the DAG basically for a website. You know, any that, that index HTML ends up requesting. So yeah, for that, we need some good story for um, passing through the request type to the block brokers. Or if we're not doing a car request, you know, since the block brokers are just doing raw, like block by block requests, like, do we just do, you know, an actual fetch directly to the trustless gateways for the car request? Like, we need a good way to handle that if you get to maybe have an understanding you know it can probably happen after the prs land and and for the next iteration but to understand like the the scope of the number of block requests compared to the number of entity requests because sometimes these websites also just happen to load like a zillion tiny objects um in which case unless unless you're requesting um, unless the car request is for a larger portion of the graph, uh, and as opposed to like a, oh, I'm just for each entity, which is, I think how, um, this is how like Saturn was doing it or, or is doing it, which is like, uh, 
you know, for each like, you know, file or whatever, right? If you have a video, it could be lots and lots of blocks, then you could ask for, you know, one, one car file for the entity and the path to it. But if you just have lots and lots of tiny objects, that's, that's not sufficient to help you. So begin to understand like what, what the scale of the problem is and, and, and options there. Um, yeah, and I guess the, the interesting note, the, the HTTP gateway, um, makes this much, much closer to being able to do, uh, run the gateway conformance tests against what is, you know, basically the code that's going to run, uh, in, in fetch, um, and the service worker gateway, uh, sort of good at like flushing out a bunch of issues. Um, although I suspect, um, Ed, that leveraging some of the install land code would probably be uh, be better or make things you know easier there there are some things like that aren't that aren't tackled here that i think you've tackled well like um like handling handling subdomains and uh and handling like what happens when the uh the website that you're loading has its own service worker um things like that that probably better to 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 tackle uh once than more than once because they're kind of a pain uh, and easy to overlook. Is the install land code is that that's uh, on GitHub, open source? Uh, yeah, that old install land code is is binned. It's not really used. There's um there's a new GitHub repo which isn't yet public, um, which is where the development's happening. Um, what I can do is share that, share that GitHub repo, um, as soon as it's, as soon as it's, um, public. Cool. Cool. Um, other things on people's minds. Um, yeah, I mean, if no one else has, has something, I think, uh, it'd be good to flesh out, um, higher level use cases. Um, this is something I was asking in, uh, the, the verified fetch PR, but, um, use cases that we want to cover, um, with verified fetch before RC, I mean, it's working well right now for um, certain um, codecs and, and use cases, but it'd be good for people who are interested to take a look at that PR and, you know, maybe test it with uh, resources that they expect to work with it and just call those out if they're, if they're not working well, or just, you know, uh, provide me a CID, I can go test it and just make sure that we've got support for the ones that the people want, um, up front. Um, but yeah, DAG JSON, JSON's working, DAG Seabor is probably one we want. And I don't, I don't think that one's in there right now, but, um, super easy to add. You're talking for the terminal elements. Cause I think the DAG Seabor through the pathing for like what the, um, like NFT out storage folks were doing for a while, which is the pathing through DAG Seabor until you get to a Unix FS file at the end. I think that's that's working fine, right? Um I I don't know if pathing through DAG Seabor uh the, it depends on Alex might be able to answer that better, understanding the internals of Unix FS um exporter. But it's um, supports polling through Doug Siebel. There you go. Sweet. Well, cool. yeah, um, it's, it's hard to know if those things work without the without the um, you know, the the DAGs to test with, without the fixtures to um know like, hey, this is exactly this use case and testing it explicitly against it. But yeah, it's mostly relying on the the um, Unix FS um, 
module of Helio, which supports a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I think your question is kind of like, what well, what are some things to be, what are some like websites and such to be testing against? Um, Ed, did you have any in mind that were ones that you were like, these seem like obvious candidates of people who'd want to do this? Like, I imagine maybe there's like a few of the liquidity front ends that have different kinds of properties, or there's some of the ones like Uniswap that are, have their own kind of special things that would make, that would make this difficult. Um, a few, the few I test with are, um, yeah, Uniswap, Aave, Spark and Olympus. They all have an IPNS, which I just test, test with those. Um, I can share links to those if, if, if you like. Yeah, I think that would be good. And especially if there are ones that you feel like are more like edge casey than the other ones that are, are good to, to know. Cause I feel like otherwise, either we should make sure they're working or, or if they're erroring that we should make sure the errors are loud enough that people know that like, Hey, you can't use this yet. You have to use a trusted gateway for now issue here for how we implement the edge cases. Um, and some of this, I think, may also be like, you know, website, like website dependent, like if some of the way that various websites have set up cores makes it not want to work with, you know, like if they've hard coded the types of domains that they're asking for or that they're supporting, then like such as such as life, but then the user should be notified that that's what's going on. Um. Okay. Um, he's maybe speaking of cores. I I uh, um, I spoke with uh, Noah, who's one of the um, the, the guy who does most of the development on um Helios. Um, and was asking about sort of the the core, like you know the the core situation with talking to to beacon nodes and sort of how many beacon nodes there are. I it sounds like actually that you know serving the serving those requests for checkpoints is is not very much work, which is good. You want that to be very cheap. Um, and the course thing was probably just like, uh, was was more more oversight than intentional. But what's good is if it's, if you know, it's actually cheap enough to run these on like tiny boxes that like serve like all the users right now. Um, it makes it much easier to spread that load over to multiple, um, multiple entities in like the Ethereum ecosystem that could say I'm, you know, that could say that they're willing to serve like the, the beacon state data uh, or checkpoints because it's much less expensive than serving like all this, all the stateful requests about the, about uh, the network, which is what people tend to be relying on the bigger providers, like, you know, in fear and alchemy and whatnot for, um, but that means that the, the trustless part, uh, like the finding the infra people, the infra to run, to make things much less, you know, uh trusting um is actually like very doable um talk about east denver yeah, I guess are are people are people going to eat Denver? Um, I'm I'm planning on going. Probably going to talk about what we've been up to here. Um, if 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 you're interested or if you're planning on coming along, uh, maybe give give a shout in the Telegram channel uh, for this group, and we can uh, we can uh, you know coordinate something there. Or see if we can get uh you know get our talks like lined up into a track, um, as opposed to being a little more distributed uh, throughout. Um, the other other tracks going on. I see there is a a separate thread going on inside of the Zoom chat. Is there something there we want to talk about out here? Yeah, I guess uh, 
Andre, I don't know if you're maybe you're not able to to talk if you want to clarify some of what you're you're saying in in chat. Uh, yes, I am able. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a a small initiative started actually by me and uh, Eric Van Winkle from uh, Design Labs, and we are striving to implement the uh, CID as a part of the technology of a persistent identification of the data. And there is a pilot application uh, on, let's say, it's a pre-beta stage. And uh, we are uh, using uh, CIDs, Ceramic uh, Protocol, and uh, World Wide Web consor uh, Consortium uh, Decentralized Identifiers to make an abstraction over uh, CID as, let's say, the uh, some technology similar to DOI, but with the integ uh, in integ pre-integrated uh, integrity check, uh, hash-based identification, content addressing, and uh, uh, let's say uh, with a persistent out of, out of the box and the possibility to implement the reverse lookup between the different systems. Storing the data inside the IPFS uh, direct acyclic graphs. Is the is the identifier immutable or mutable? Uh, it is a version. It's versioned. The CID is not is is not mutable, but the identifier itself is versioned, but not uh, mutable. I mean, I guess I, what I'm saying, when you roll a new version, does the identifier change or is it the same? No, no, no. The identifier is the same. It's uh, uh, it's based on the lightweight implementation of the blockchain technology, so it uh, may point to the set finite set of uh, CIDs, <laughs> but it should be it should be predefined. So it is, uh, uh, let's say, if on this, I will share it on the chat. It should be this address. There is a pilot pilot application. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I will share now the proper link. So it's a uh, example. Oh, sorry. Uh, example PID for the resolving sorry some of this is also my computer having zoom plus everything else yeah yeah mine too <laughs> um okay So it works like that. So the identifier number is like 46 yes. plus whatever, I guess, maybe the domain there or just 46? Actually, yes. Actually, it's 46. Uh, yeah, but for further exploration, it is better to communicate directly with uh, with our team. Okay. Interesting. I, I think that... Um, so for... I guess one way people can can do sort of mutable, depending on what they're trying to do with the integrations. Um, one way people have been able to take like let's let's call them other mutability systems, right? Other other naming systems that tend to you know do mutations like you know allow for versioning such beyond the hash. Um, whether it's like you know Git branches or or ENS names or whatever is to leverage um, DNS link, like not not from the DNS perspective, but just from an API perspective. Um, you can kind of plug in arbitrary resolvers, like say, okay, actually I want a PID resolver. And then, you know, yeah. uh, you know, 46.PID or whatever. And then that would do the, the conversion for you. Yeah, the, the ID seems interesting. And uh, yeah, so it, it will be also, implemented use some uh, additional resolver but now it's like uh 
which which and also makes i think if with the service worker gateway stuff this also becomes a little easier because in order to implement like one of the annoying things uh with using public gateways is that if you have a a sort of custom resolver you want to use that isn't like super widely everywhere yet like there's support on ipfs.io for dot ether and doc crypto but like not for most of the other ones that have 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 emerged um and so instead of trying to like figure out okay can we get the infrastructure to support the new thing you can instead just bundle that into the app itself right yes. so if you have like sort of a service worker gateway deployment you can just say okay here's one here's here is my gateway that does that supports PIDs, and then you're sort of like good to go, um, exactly. instead of waiting on public info to like uptake it, which I think exactly, should, exactly. should make things the, easier. Yeah, it's one one of the ideas, uh, underlying ideas of the project is to share the software and to let the owner of infrastructure and data to share also the resolver. Very cool. Thank you. Um, all right. Are there other things on people's minds? Things they've issues they've run into, things they want feedback on. Um, or is there they're looking for more uh, more information on what's happening? Sorry, do you, uh, do you mean? No, the I'm just no. I'm I'm just asking asking the crowd. Uh, if not, then uh, you know, give people some time back, and we'll see you all next time. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you.